Hey guys, it's Mark Ling here, and in this video I'm going to take an image and make it into something that's uniquely my own um, using Be Funky. Now, there are various reasons why you'd want to not use just stock images in of themselves. One is because um, sometimes multiple people use the same stock images, and that's one of the ways that various places that you advertise, whether it be Facebook, Google and other places, it's one of the ways that they kind of um, tie you to other people who might be doing stuff that's wrong using the same image, and yet you can you can be somewhat tarnished with the same brush. But if you've got your own unique image, there's no issue with that. Um, secondly, I've found in recent times that if, as long as I pick the right image and do it right, do it reasonably well so that the image that I create out of it still produces the right feeling that I'm going for then and it doesn't just look really weird and abstract like it still produces a bit of an emotion or a feeling then sometimes the um, the sort of cartoonerized image where it was derived from a photo so it still feels real ish Sometimes that does a lot better because, let's say I take a, um, <clears throat> take a woman like this and she could be, maybe she could be Hispanic or something, you know? So let's say I run it and I cartoonerize it a little bit. Then somebody in a worldwide market, oh, let's say I'm promoting a weight loss product and not everybody is Caucasian and white, you know? There are Asians, there are Spanish people, there are people... There are black, there are people that are white, and if you can get somebody that is more neutralish in between everything, then more and more of your target market can relate to that person when they see them. They can see themselves in that person, and it tends to convert higher to sales, I've found, by having um, that kind of audience. Now, obviously, if you've got multiple pictures, or you've got a reason why you want to try it, somebody that's say completely white but you want the older age group or whatever you know go for it and sometimes it, it works it's not an absolute truth that it always works out that way i've just found in recent times that more often than not if i'm comparing different people different ethnicities stuff like that and someone that has got dark hair uh slightly dark skin or whatever seems to do the best if if you've given the option uh, at the very least People that are aged over 30 tend to do better than if they're too young, too perfect, too pretty, whatever. Um, seems to seems to be good. Um, now, what I do is, I've got the image. I've loaded in. I just dragged and dropped it into here to start with. You know, you click the open and open an image that you're going to work with. And, and all I do is I just click down to here, not frame, sorry, down to Artsy, and I will click on Digital Art. The first one I always have a quick look at is Cartoonerizer. Sometimes it makes their faces look too warped that it doesn't work. Sometimes it does work. Let's see if it works in this case. I click it, see what it's going to do to the image. Sometimes it works, it, it's great. Like I say, this, this looks pretty good to me. Um, it is already turn this into a bit of a cartoony type image might be a bit on the bright side i'm just going to click on the settings and see if i sharpen less sharpen what is that going to do to it first i'm going to go between less sharp and now more sharp and see just a little play around just to see if i can get that backdrop shown a bit more no maybe the amount then is just a bit high um just a little bit so i'll bring it back to say 65 see see so take it down a third so the more i take it down the more of those bricks show up i don't need them all to show up to be honest it, it's just a an amount like is that too far is it too little maybe about here's about right see so i click done now i can opt to run the cartoonizer again let's see what that does to it so double cartooning it i could use it as is of course uh, is there any benefit to that? You know, if you want it to look even more illustrated, sometimes running that second time can have that little impact. Um, let's see. I'll, see, it just sort of gives it just that little bit more edge. I'll do go to there. Let's see versus here. No, I'll, I'll go without that for now. I'm just going to try um, going down to this one, which you can't quite see. I'll see if I can drag that down. Oh, there we go. Crosshatch. Let's have a look at that. 
I mean, I could use it as is now already, but let's see. If I just put a little bit of crosshatch on it, not too much, just a little bit. It just has that little bit more of a sketched feel. See, like that? So I'll just go like that to there. Uh, I could go all the way out, but it's getting too much. About there. Uh, there even, just under. Get like that. Tick. Done. All right. I mean, I feel like that's already good enough. However, I will have a quick look. Sometimes I'll just play around. There's so many different ones in here. You know, you could have a look and you could click on watercolor, for instance, and say, oh, what's that going to do to it? Just have a play around. I think it's already fine. Um, that's not really helping at all, is it? So, no, I could have a look at these brightness contrast settings, stuff like that. Uh, well, the background there. Oops, oh, I see, so that lets me fill in a background, just ignore that. Um, let's go down to um, levels here, just click on that. Uh, I can have a look and decide if I want to see, I can darken things up a tiny bit. I might just do that. Gamma. I don't even know what some of these things do, but it's just giving me a moment to just get a little bit more out of this image if I want, if I think that some of it could look a tiny bit different. Um, I just want to brighten that tiny bit there. It's not necessary, but you know, you can play around with those levels. I can have a look at now. I mean, it is fine as it is. I'm just having a little play, to be honest. That's not necessarily needed. Uh, I can look at the exposure levels, bright, there we go, that's your brightness and contrast, so brightness, contrast, maybe there, but contrast, a little bit like that, highlights, yeah, quite liking how this is, don't want it to be too dark, it's all your own personal preference at that point. Um, and then the vibrance, let's see, what, does that help in any way? I think it's alright without doing anything. Alright, so let's say I'm really happy with this. Uh, maybe I can't really see your arm that well, so I might just quickly... Oh, what does Auto Enhance do? No, that's all. Um, I might just quickly have a look at those levels again, the exposure, just to see if there's anything else I should do. Don't want it to be too dark though, so maybe maybe it was fine as it was. I'm just giving a look. Highlights. That I'm just flick this between uh, now, do I like this? Do I not? Um, I go like that, and then I can always revert back like that. What's better, that or that? I think that's better. Okay, so now I'm done. So all I'll do is I'll click save, and it's no longer an eye stop image. It is my healthy eating image. Great. Let's save that at about. See the, the kilobytes? I can get those kilobytes down if I want. Low quality image. Good. Let's see. Let's get it 440, 404. Save. And we're done. And what does that look like now? That looks, that looks great. As an image. Alright, so um, obviously it can display smaller or however you want to display it, depending on the page, mobile, whatever, but it's um, we've got a pretty good image there for however we want to use it on our site. Alright, that's it from me for this video. I'll see you next time. Bye for now.